right, this is a statue of Major General Henry Ware Lawton. This is the man that the city of Lawton, Oklahoma is named after. He enlisted in the Union forces at the outbreak of the Civil War at the age of 17 and ended up uh, receiving the Congressional Medal of Honor for Heroism at the uh, Battle of Atlanta. Originally left the Army uh, with the rank of Colonel, but rejoined and uh, reached the, the rank of Major General. And he's not really the reason I'm here. But I'm at the uh, Museum of the Great Plains in Lawton, Oklahoma, and hopefully they're going to let me take video in here. But uh, if they do, then that's where I'm headed. All right. You're in. I wasn't, wasn't even sure they were going to be open. And I really have no idea what to expect in here. But we got the, uh, the steel plow. Conquered the plains. Next time you uh, think you're working hard in the garden, <laughs> or such a pain going to the grocery store, just imagine having to run this sucker. So the mass production of steel plows made farming possible in the Great Plains. Metal blades slice through the intricate tangles of roots and the virgin soil, a job that was nearly impossible with earlier implements. Person, you know, today they made it a whole heck of a lot easier, but just imagine being in a position where this was easier. This, this made things easier. The following the success of the mass production of automobiles industry applied to technology to agriculture. Car maker Henry Ford introduced the Fordson in 1917, the first mass produced tractor. Within six years, Fordson tractors represented 77% of the U.S. market. And really, I don't know if this one's actually from 1917. Really, the uh, the basic design of your standard tractor didn't change much for a good long while either. So it just says, okay, the most looks like the most recent patent on that was 1923. Now, here we go, harnessing wind power. A wind can be converted into electricity just like it's over. Okay. There we go. Beam electricity. Oh, I don't think it's. Oh, yeah. There we go. See if we can get all three of them lit up. Maybe better a couple of blades. It's probably. <laughs> yes, we are. We have enough to get the best of them. It's like a strobe light. in your house. It's a sharp rifle. Looks like we've got a, uh, a 
hide puller. Ooh. Buffalo hide scale. Stuff made out of bison bone, apparently. You got toothbrush, dice, and buttons. And then a Skinner's knife here. And this is how we've, uh, after years and years of putting them on the endangered list, this is now no longer the case with over hunting didn't lead to near extinction. The, the buffalo. But they've uh, they've been taken off the endangered list now, almost uh, well over a hundred years later. And oh my gosh, that is a pile of buffalo skulls. Good grief. interesting to spend a night at a cowboy camp. Grab your gear and dress up for a night around the chuck wagon. So this would have been your typical cowboy setup. There's your coffee pot and your bowl for your beans, I guess. For your stew. Is your salt and pepper. Chuck Wagons. Changed cowboy cuisine. Food on the open on the trail open range and the ranch changed after the Texas Cattleman Charles Goodnight designed the first chuck wagon. Before the truck wagon, the Cowboys' daily provisions consisted of dried meats, fruits, and other non-perishables they could carry in their saddlebags. But that changed when Goodnight had an idea for a portable kitchen. Bread. General store. What is it? What is it? What is it? Hey, you want to take a guess? They're on the left. Rug beater. One way to clean rugs in the days before electricity was to take them outside and beat them. Well, hell, I still do that. I don't have one of those, but. And then this thing here is National A couple of different kinds of handles up there. Well, it looks like a vacuum cleaner down here, so is that what it is? It's a vacuum cleaner, yeah. The first vacuum cleaners were hand or foot powered. To use this plunger type vacuum, the operator pulled and pushed the handle up and down. On the upstroke, the vacuum sucked in loose. <laughs> so <laughs> you basically powered your own vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Well, hey, it'd save electricity, wouldn't it? And then this looks like some kind of butter churn or something. And that's what it is, butter churn. Years ago, rural families had to do most tasks by hand, such as milking cows and making butter. Cream would have been poured into this container and then churned with the long-handled wooden dasher. Well, you're with, with churning butter anyway. Oh, that's pretty cool. Toys. See a bunch of tops. Comes up. 
what, what, what would be blocks today. And a little tractor there. A wooden dog. A little bowling set up there. Something else. Checkers. Have eggs, need eggs. Five dozen eggs for 22 cents. Well, that egg don't look like it's in too good shape. I would need that one. I have a bottle of milk. Well, I'll bet that. I'll bet milk in a glass bottle probably tasted pretty darn good. That is a little before my time. Postcards, one cent. Local letters, one cent. Out of town letters, two cents. Man needed a little nip. Well, these are real. Okay, that's empty. <laughs> I wonder if the, if the brand names are real. Zodiac, English Breakfast, Monogram Tea. Butterfly brand stringless beans. Yeah, so you got your pure sugar. Skin cream. But I don't see no Dapper Dan, not even any fop. Okay, now we're getting serious about our windmills. <laughs> this was one that uh, was used to make uh, to turn wind into water. The rainfall on the Great Plains can be irregular, and historically there was very little surface water. But where, where water was scarce, wind was abundant. In 1854, Daniel Halliday invented a new type of windmill that could handle the strong winds of the Great Plains region. This was one of several major developments that eventually led to the large-scale settlement of the plains. We didn't have plugged in. <laughs> that was the Museum of the Great Plains. Sorry if I've uh, didn't talk loud enough in there. Anytime I'm in one of these places, I kind of feel like my voice is echoing to Canada. <laughs> I try to keep my voice down, but. Uh, hopefully you got to look at some pretty cool stuff. Uh, the tornado part, I'm going to put it in a separate video. That way if you want to see that part, it'll it'll just be that. Uh, does not ruin the experience just watching it on video. You got to be there unless you, you have something vibrating your butt. <laughs> and, uh, having, well, almost uh, having to live through that tornado didn't really live through it we were 50 miles away it didn't really get that close to us but my, my uncle was living in Wichita Falls at the time but anyway it was uh, more of a flashback for me in a lot of ways but uh, yeah it's a pretty cool little museum again not the reason I came to, to Lawton Oklahoma today but I hope you enjoyed taking a look so please like share comment and subscribe not necessarily in that order and I will see you next time.